I'm a homicidal maniac. They look just like everyone else. Hi, I'm LGO, and if you couldn't tell by the very bad impression I just gave, I will be doing a Wednesday-themed project today. I have only seen the first episode and a half of the Wednesday TV show that just came out on Netflix, but I have seen a lot of edits and photos on social media of Jenny Ortega looking absolutely fabulous in this puffy black dress, and she does this amazingly kooky little dance in it that just, it honestly just looks like stimming to me the entire time, and I love it so much. Especially the side to side. Um, I have sheer black fabric and it's finals week, so instead of doing uh, any work for my final projects, I decided I was going to make a Wednesday dress and I thought I'd actually document my project for once. This is going to be fun. So, fabric choices. I have a big sheer black panel that I'm going to use for the over dress and all of the ruffles she's got going on on her neck and the skirt but because it's so sheer it has to have something under it. I have this black pencil skirt that I am not using and also for some reason has one little square cut out of the entire middle of it which is really inconvenient, so I'll figure I'll use that for an under bodice. And for the skirt, I actually own a lot of black skirts. The next step is draping a pattern, but we'll be uh, using my gal, Grinhilda here, uh, we call her Hildy, to draft our pattern. Completely strapless dress, um, and I think, don't quote me on it, never quote me on anything. I think it's a sweetheart, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a sweetheart neckline because I just I just don't don't want to deal with making anything else. But draping is honestly one of my favorite processes as a person who sews. I'm always happy. Ooh, that's satisfying. So we have our side front and side back pieces. And this is a lining fabric, because it's a fabric that I have no use for. And uh, we need two of these in your lining fabric and two in the black fabric. And then for the center front and center back pieces, uh, they're both cut on the fold, so it's one big piece for each. And they only need one of the lining fabric and one out of the black. Drew! My roommate's being super loud. I'll be right back. Close your door. I'm filming a YouTube video. My apologies for that interruption. Just get cutting. See you on the other side. One thing you can always say about me is I will always try my best to save fabric and it's not out of, like, yes, I try to save fabric and conserve it to be good to the planet. I'm also lazy. We're doing all my laundry, which means sweats and kilts. We have our lining piece and our outer piece. Bada bing, bada boom. Long like this because this is the center back panel and the closure is going to be on the side back right here. I like to hide my closures either under the armpit or in the side back because I think that unless you can make it really pretty, it shouldn't go in the front of the back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to line these pieces up and uh, right sides together, as always, and pin them all along the tops and the sides, uh, leaving this bottom edge open. That way uh, we can flip it inside out. 
I completely forgot about straps. So what you're going to do is you're going to take two long strips of fabric, fold them in half, run them under your machine to make a tube, and then you're going to flip that tube inside out. What I'm doing next is I'm going to lay the straps between the outer layer and the lining layer right sides together. This will make them catch between the seams when I sew all along the top and sides, leaving the bottom of it open. Okay, so once you've got all of this pinned, leave one of the back ends of it open. Take a string and add some knots to it. Then you're going to tuck it in between the layers like this and then you're going to sew over and through the knots as you go. That way when we flip it inside out we'll have little loops for the buttons. After everything's been turned and sewn together, I just give it a nice press under the iron so that the edges are all clean. I have an entire new bag of actual sets of buttons and this camera's too low, isn't it? Instead, I'm just gonna use this. This is a vintage butter mint tin. The, the tin, I've looked it up, it's like, it's worth like $60. Uh, and it is full of like four generations of buttons that the women in my family have just hoarded and collected and keep using over the years. So we're gonna dig around in here and use these for Wednesday. We've got our first try on. This is really weird. All right, so the buttons in the back are doing their job, it seems. And then these straps were already sewn in when I sewed up the bodice. And so now I've got the front straps pinned in place and I'm going to sew those on and then I can get started on the skirt and the roughly overdress. I've been looking at videos and stills of Wednesday dancing in this dress and my biggest problem is that I only have one panel of that sheer fabric and I found an extra little piece of black sheer that I just had lying around so I'll try and use that creatively but I have a very puffy black skirt that I'm going to use under it um, and I think that'll make up for some of the lack of sheer that I have. I also want to make sure I have enough for the ruffles. For the collar, this is was a curtain so it already has a finished bottom on it so I'm just going to cut a rectangle off of this to use for the collar and then the rest of it can go towards ruffles. And for the buttons that she has going down the front of it, I think I'm going to do false buttons and then just have it close in the side seam just like I did with the under bodice uh, that way I don't have to deal with trying to make the front of it close up because I hate the idea of doing that so we're gonna start draping and see where it takes us hopefully it takes us somewhere good <laughs> okay change of plan I'm gonna cut this into as many uh, strips for ruffles as I'm comfortable with and then I'm gonna draft the bodice because I am most worried about not having enough ruffle This long piece of fabric that I made sure was wide enough to come out a little past the shoulders and long enough to go past the waist and I just cut a hole high right in the middle of it and that's how I'm going to start draping this. So I'm just going to settle it on top of her and we're going to go from here. For those of you wondering uh, how I plan on getting this over my head, I will probably put a little slit in the back that just closes with a single button. Uh, that way there's just enough room for my head to pop through. I have another dress that I used a similar process on and it worked. So now I've got it pinned to the mannequin all around the neck, 
down the center front line and all the way down her center back line. And so now what I can do is I can start pulling and manipulating the material and pinning it to where it'll come together on the sides, just like this, to give that nice put together feel. Okay, so now I've got it pinned to where it pinches in on either side and sort of creates a flatter silhouette. I'm going to cut out all around this without disturbing these side pins as much as possible and then run it through the machine and pop it back on the mannequin to see how we're doing. So I've sewn up one side of the bodice for the side piece and for the other side I've just left it open and I have hemmed each edge and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put grommets in it that way it can just lace up the side and I don't have to deal with buttons and then Speaking of buttons, I added this little, I don't know if you can see it, darker stripe down the front to get that faux button-up look. And then uh, the collar will be attached and make it look like it's actually a nice little button-up dress when it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and hand sew that on and then uh, get the grommets put in. Then we'll uh, start pinning the collar, which is just a rectangle. Making a collar. What you're going to do is take a measuring tape, start where you want your collar to begin, measure all the way around, and this one is going to be 19 and a half inches long. I'm using the already finished edge of this, so I'm just going to cut 19 and a half inches of this, and then I'm going to use fire, because it's, because it's, it's a plastic poly, so it's fine, so I'm going to use some fire, and we're going to singe it. We won't pin it right sides together, we'll pin it wrong sides together to where when it flips out, there's a nice seam all the way around the neck. The next step I'm taking is to take all of the ruffle pieces and sew a seam a half inch down from the top. After these seams have been made, I take it off the machine and pull on the bobbin thread. Not on the top thread, on the bottom thread only. After these have been pulled, it'll create a ruffle effect, but you have to be careful not to break the thread while you're pulling it. I broke about three of these, and it was not fun. Okay, so this part's going to be a bit of improv, but basically I'm just going to start taking all these rows of ruffles that I made and pinning them until I like the way they are, then I'll add them more securely with the pins, and I'm actually just going to hand sew these on, um, because I don't have any black thread for my machine. <laughs> I ran out, so, yeah. So very fluffy. I'm pretty happy with this arrangement, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off the mannequin and start tacking it on with hand sewing, and then we can tackle the skirt. So I'm going to use the pre-sewn other top of it, and I'm going to make that into the waistband. And I have a big long panel, and I'm going to gather the top into that waistband, and then tack the rest of my ruffles onto the bottom. Okay, we have the top of a dress. So what I've got going is the ruffles have all been pinned and treated and then I realized I couldn't open the back of it because of the collar. So what I'm going to do instead is I slit open the front and I'm just gonna add a little button loop. I've just got it pinned for now, but I'm gonna add a button loop at the top by the neck to just hold this closed. And I've checked movement wise, and I just started doing her little shoulder thing. Bum, bum, bum. And the buttons and collar are staying in place. The ruffles fluff a little. I love it. So what I'm going to do now, since this is over the black top, I'm going to pin it down and tack it on here, here. That way uh, it falls correctly every time I put it on. But I'm leaving both sides open because this is where it uh, laces up and where it buttons up back here, back here as well. I'm gonna add a waistband to this. So I'm just gonna go in 
and add a waistband to clean up the line. And then I have an extra ruffle from the skirt. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach a ruffle right to the bottom of the top. So it's a little extra fluff given in. Okay, so we have the underskirt, the overskirt, including its frills. I got those tacked on today. We have the top. I added the little panel up top so it can pin close. And I also added a ruffle to the bottom edge. And um, for anyone who does like anything that laces up and doesn't want their laces to slip, I just tie buttons to the end of mine. That way I don't lose the ends of my laces. And I can just untie them if I need to completely undo it. So I've got the top. And then I also went ahead and just whipped together a little sash to cover any mistakes at the waist. I think, I think that's all the pieces. So I'm gonna try it on and if it looks good, I can do the reveal tomorrow. I'm so excited. It's not terrible. Ta-da! It's so sloppy because I made it in like 10 hours and like none of it's finished and it's terrible, but it's so pretty. Slight change of plans. Uh, what I've done is I've taken this skirt and I've just ripped open the back of it because I need more flounce for the kicking part of the dance. And what I've done is on the very back latch, I've just added this extra piece of black tool so that it hangs down and covers the hole that's gonna be left. I feel like this moves much better than before because before it was getting stuck like right here, but now it just goes all the way with the kicks, but also it's not completely, not completely barren back there. I might actually, what if I scrunch this piece up and let it hang like this and, oh, yes. Okay, I'm gonna make it trip, I'm gonna make it tri triple tiered. I've done it. Okay, so front, same as usual. On the back, we've got the tiers and all the layers. The goal is that movement is supposed to look interesting. All the ruffles and things are supposed to make me look a little, little weirder. Do makeup and hair tomorrow and put it all on. Yes! Here she is in all her Wednesday Adams glory. I'm LGO. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok. I have a Patreon, a link tree, all that jazz. Comment what your like little like stim dance would be, cause mine is definitely like the little like flappy hands. I love doing happy flappy hands. So if you have like a specific go-to like stimming dance move, let me know in the comments, cause. I think they're so fun, and this was really great. I'm a homicidal maniac. They look just like everyone else. Filming share stuff is so hard, you guys. This I gotta get better at cameras, you guys. I middle the the boob line. <laughs> hate, 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 hate it. That poor sad <laughs> well, Stop being mean! Why do you hate me? <gasps> That's a Hanukkah tree. <laughs> That's how sad. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. It's so great. Take me out to dinner first. Am I right? That's that's getting cut. So, 